Uh, my name is Jean-Christophe Delmas, and I am the donor contact point uh, for Norway under the Active Citizens Fund. Uh, and I'm here along with my Icelandic colleague, uh, Yalti, and also Aira, who works with me here in uh, the Oslo office of the Norwegian Helsinki Committee. Um, so we're just going to be very brief, saying just a few words about what the Active Citizens Fund is and what this meeting today is about, um, and also about our roles of donor, as donor contact points. Uh, so as mentioned, I'm John Christoph Delmas, and Yalti, if you want to introduce yourself as well. I'm Hjalte Björn so I'm the contact point in Iceland, and I work for the Icelandic Human Rights Centre. And I, if you want to say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, great. So we work uh, to inform civil society in uh, the donor countries, being Norway and uh, Iceland, about the opportunities that exist under the EEA grants and the Active Citizen Fund for civil society. Uh, my guess and impression is that most of you will be familiar with the EEA grants at least, and probably with the Active Citizens Fund as well. So we're going to be very brief in going over it. Uh, Eva, would you mind jumping a slide? Uh, so what is the Active Citizens Fund? Uh, it goes to 14 countries in Europe, and it's there to uh, skip a slide again. Those are 14 countries. Seven of those countries are represented here today, I believe. Uh, yeah, thanks, Eva. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm just gonna lose yeah, those are countries. Yeah. Um, so you probably, and you'll, I, they'll introduce themselves afterwards, so we won't dwell on that. So uh, over to the next one. All right. So what is the Active Citizens Fund? Uh, very briefly explained, it's there to support civil society organizations in those named 14 European countries, and it exists to promote democracy, human rights, and social cohesion. And as mentioned, it comes out of the EEA grants. Uh, in terms of topics, it focuses uh, more specifically on everything to do with good governance, social justice, and also we can go further afield and also cover um, other topics such as, for example, environmental issues and so on, so long as it has to do with advocacy, civic participation, um, or capacity building. And it also uh, works to, um, well, it also funds partnerships between the donor countries and the beneficiary countries, which is why we're here today. Um, I'll just say a couple words about why we're here today afterwards. Uh, if you want to uh, take it from here, Yalti. Um... Yes. Um, so, as uh, John Christoph went into about what the Active Citizen Fund is, uh, Eva, can you go to the next slide, maybe? Yeah. Um, so, um, essentially, um, the Active Citizen Fund uh, funds uh, functions on the basis on in both uh, donor countries, but mainly in, in what's called the, the 14 beneficiary countries, which we saw earlier. Um, the operators of the of the grants are work in each and every um, country. So you have 14 different independent fund operators who are um, civil society organizations, um, seven of whom you, you'll have presentations of, of here today. Now, um, in the countries themselves, um, the beneficiary countries, the, the partners who, who, who are, are civil society organizations. However, in Norway and Iceland, um, all entities can be eligible as project partners, not as leaders um, in, in bilateral calls for, for uh, grants. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think, is there anything you want to add, John Christoph? No, that, that, that was great. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I'll just add uh, what this meeting today is about. You know, you will have read the, the announcement uh, that we sent out. Um, it is, uh, it is where in 2023, the projects ended 2024. And um, there is uh, there is a kind of a, a rush at the moment to uh, 
to spend the money that's remaining, to be blunt. And that means that when it comes to bilateral calls, which bilateral, I mean, I'm, I'm going to try and you know be clear about the, the jargon. Uh, bilateral means with donor countries, so, so Norway and Iceland. Um, there are a lot of opportunities at the moment. And so we've tried to gather all the uh, fund operators who have calls to present uh, their calls here today. And, um, and also, uh, before I give over, if you want to jump the slide, Eva, before I give the word to our fund operators, um, just to know if you're looking for a partner after today, you are inspired and uh, you want to apply for a call. If you're looking for a partner, we have a database um, of organizations, both in beneficiary and in donor countries, well, Norway, essentially, um, that you can look through in looking for a partner. So we're gonna post that link in the chat in a moment. And another slide, please, uh, Eva. And yeah, this is just uh, contact details as well. If you're looking for a partner, um, feel free to get in touch with uh, me on the Norwegian side at acf at .no or at info at .no for Iceland. And uh, that's all for me. And without further ado, the fund operators. Uh, do we, we have an order of appearance, which is alphabetical, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Good. Sorry. I'm so sorry, so sorry. Yanis? Hello, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I just skipped the presentation to make sure Yanis, you, you are on, but I'm going to put it back on. Thanks. Yeah. My name is Yanis Timitris, and I'm part of the Unknown Predator team here in Cyprus, uh, which in Cyprus is compiled by the NGO Support Center and the uh, Gun Expert Consulting. So um, we have recently launched our call, our bilateral initiatives call here in Cyprus. It's, um, it's a small call with a total uh, budget of 12,000 euros and a maximum grant per initiative of 4,000 euros. So we're looking into small actions or initiatives of one to six months. And um, in our case, both Cyprus-based CSOs and donor state entities can be the main applicant uh, for our call. Um, obviously, the objective is to enhance cooperation between Cyprus-based CSOs and entities from the donor states. Um, that's the general umbrella. And more specifically, we want to see initiatives that fall under the increased citizen participation in civic activities. We have some suggested thematics, but this is obviously open uh, to the uh, applicants. Um, we want to see here about uh, human rights defense, media freedom, activism, and advocacy work. And also our second um, uh, target is about empowering vulnerable groups. Um, whereas there we have the suggested thematic areas of uh, migrant inclusion and social cohesion, tackling gender-based violence, disability inclusion, and so on. So um, what kind of activities are, do we expect to see? As, as I said, it, it's, a, it's a small, it, it's, a, it's a call with a small scope and, and budget. So what we, we have in mind is um, short uh, study visits, trainings, workshops or some uh, networking activities uh, and some training um, that would take place. It can be online training as well. Um, I have included in, in the updated uh, presentation, just in order that when you circulate it, and uh, I have an updated uh, presentation uh, uh, links, um, that if you follow the, the QR code, um, we're gonna see the results of a survey we circulated. We circulated a survey among, uh, it was open to uh, interested uh, partic uh, participants um, to note down their organization profile and the preferences 
for partners. And we have collected that, and it's gonna be shared um, on the website um, continuously. So if, if you are interested in finding partners from Cyprus, you can um, follow the link and on the website, on our website, you will find all information about the, the applicants from Cyprus looking for partners in donor states. Now, the deadline for submission is uh, 14th of May, uh, 2023. And we expect uh, to see these initiatives being um, implemented from uh, September onwards. That's all from our side. Um, I just wanted to mention one thing on as we go and before Estonia jumps in that after the meeting, we're going to also send you um, like this sheet with com um, comparisons of all the calls so that you can hopefully easily could navigate and see the differences, because this is what we are trying to focus on, like show you which of the calls are open for donor state entities themselves, which in which do you uh, have an applicant from each country, but there are also some differences in the amount of the grants or the longitude of the projects and that you also have it all in one table. Uh, but uh, before then, we just wanted to talk about them a little bit, showing you also the um, faces of the people who are behind it. So that being said, um, let's move to Estonia. And Catherine is going to tell you all about it. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Katrin and I come from Estonia. And we also have a call open for enhancing bilateral cooperation and, and of course, possible future joint initiatives between Estonia and Norway and Iceland. Uh, our call says that it's uh, open until further notice. So in practice, we are most likely close, close it at the end of 2023 so that we can wind down projects by the end of April 2024, which is a deadline for the whole program. Uh, I don't have any slides because uh, the terms of the call are pretty straightforward. Uh, funds are available for all sorts of uh, activities with the aim of partnering up, uh, sharing experiences, ideas, networking, study trips, attending events that take place in Estonia or in donor, donor countries. And we don't expect you to come up with something big and, and with, with big impact, it's really for building and enhancing relationships. And the amount that is available is relatively small, it's 2,500 euros per applicant. However, it should be sufficient for a short business trip, which we had in mind when, when designing this call. Uh, applicants of a call can be only Estonian organizations, uh, NGOs, uh, in working in all ACF priority areas, which currently are democracy, human rights, social inclusion, but also environment and climate change. Uh, the call says that applicants can be public benefit NGOs from Estonia, but this public benefit notion should not be a problem because practically majority of Estonian NGOs work in public benefit. And also the application process is really simple. Uh, all you have to do is to partner up with an NGO, with Estonian NGO, who then submits a short application. And if, for example, you are interested in, in partnering with an Estonian NGO or wish to learn from some specific Estonian experience, but you don't know any Estonian NGO, then you can send us a request and we can, we can provide you with a list of potential partners. Uh, uh, and that's basically it. We don't have any uh, any new calls for proposals coming up uh, since we have uh, concluded all our seven calls. But uh, however, I believe it's it's good time to think about the future uh, ACF period and and prepare prepare for that or then just share experience with with Estonian and Iceland and Norway and just, just for the sake of exchanging that experience and learning from each other. 
Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And then we have uh, Greece, I presume. Yeah. Yes, we do. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we are next. So I'm Katerina from Greece. Uh, and uh, I will be taking a bit more of your time. Like I have uh, slightly more slides. It was mutually agreed because we've been running uh, as fund operators. You can see it's two organizations in Greece that uh, are work jointly as a consortium. We've been running the call for bilateral initiatives since February, 2019. Uh, Eva, you can move on to the next slide. As you can assume, this was the best timing because we started back in uh, 2019 and then we had the pandemic. So we all these organizations came up with these perfect ideas of collaboration. We contracted uh, their projects. We were so happy to, to launch it and start working. And then the pandemic came and kind of uh, froze and uh, changed a bit the, the situation in this field. However, uh, once the, the main, let's say, limitations uh, were over, uh, we relaunched the call in a way and we re-promoted it. And up until today, we have received 29 uh, applications uh, with a total, uh, let's say, allocated amount for this call reaching 142,000 euros. So as you, as you can see, it's like a bit larger than the rest of the of the uh, speakers like in this uh, in this panel. So the maximum amount per application, it's uh, 6,000 uh, euros. And uh, most of the applicants, uh, when they apply, they apply for the entire amount. What is kind of innovative in this call is that we can also have entities from the donor states applying directly. I mean, locating their partner and sending us the application uh, directly for evaluation. Uh, out of the 29 initiatives we have received so far, uh, the ones that got uh, approved were 25. The four that were in a way not approved uh, were mainly due to eligibility criteria. Uh, sometimes the, um, the entities that apply, especially on behalf of Greece, do not fulfill the eligibility criteria that are uh, the let's say as you can see in the slide the who is eligible being a non-governmental organization uh, nevertheless for the donor states we're a bit more flexible and we do accept proposals irrespective of their legal status so the call is open until june 30 2023 but we are a bit uh, like discussing that and we might have an extension announced within the the following months as well, because like many, many organizations are, are interested so far. So let me move on to the next slide, Eva. Uh, here you can see the prioritized areas of concern that uh, I, I'm not going to go into much details because it, they have been mentioned uh, before. But basically what we do is like we follow the overall objectives of the Active Citizens Fund. And uh, we have the designated focal points who will evaluate uh, the, each application that we receive and while having a bit of an expertise on the field of, of the application, we try to, to do that and to run it in parallel with the rest of the calls that we have open and are dedicated to each one of these areas that you will see, civic engagement, human rights, advocacy, empowerment of vulnerable groups, and uh, recently gender equality and women empowerment. Uh, you, the pictures that you're seeing are from initiatives that are already implemented. This one took place um, this summer between Aniko Plano and Tvibit in Norway. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It was um, a youth film festival with participation of children who came from Norway. So it was like, a, let's say, an exchange trip. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we thought that it would be useful for you to have a list of suggested activities in a way so that you know what usually, what is the usual idea of projects that are funded under this call. Uh, so it is very frequent that we have like uh, organizations who are searching for a partner for a future project or they want to deepen an existing partnership. At the same time, we have like um, wider efforts for networking, exchange of good practices and knowledge. We do have visits by experts and trainings and coaching. Uh, and of course, we have uh, conferences and workshops uh, with a concrete impact of, on bilateral uh, relations. 
and you study trips, of course, any other idea is more than welcome. I mean, this is a, an indicative list, but it's not like uh, all that you can do under this call. We try to be as flexible as possible. And again, a picture with uh, like, we, we try to keep the balance and it's a picture from uh, ESC's uh, Greek organization and Icelandic Women's Rights Association. It's interesting to mention at this point that uh, although I put one picture with uh, a partnership with, um, with a donor from Norway and one from Iceland, the percentage is not like 50-50. Out of the 25 proposals, 20 were, are with a donor uh, project promoter from Norway and only five from Iceland. So I'm just mentioning it for the statistics. And hopefully we'll be receiving more from Iceland within the next month. Eva, you can move on to the next one. And uh, the, the next two slides, which are my last, are two examples, uh, like full examples of uh, bilateral initiatives that uh, took place under the call. The one was in, implemented again this summer. I tried to choose, uh, let's say, recent examples. Uh, you see the names of the organizations on, on the slide. And the focus was advocacy. Uh, it included uh, various visits and meetings, and uh, we had like a, a final, as you can see in the picture, a final uh, workshop and re um, conference in a way that took place in Athens with the participation of uh, 67 individuals and uh, collaboration with various organizations. So this really multiplied the effect of the bilateral initiative, and uh, we hope to see more of this collaboration in the future. And then the next one, this was advocacy themed, and the next one was uh, in the um, in gender rights and inequality field. And it was a three months initiative at the beginning of 2022. And we had five experts working together to produce training materials uh, and the new learning course on sexual harassment in English, of course, with a focus on the workplace. And uh, we talk about two organizations that are very experienced on their field. And they work together based on the common and different experience that they have. And uh, they produce the contents of the course that is also available online. This is from like the, the leaflet from their final uh, dissemination event as well. So this was like for you to have a brief idea of what is going on in Greece. And the rest of it, you will see it in the Excel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katrina. And the next one, surprise, surprise, is Latvia. Iva. Hi, <laughs> I'm Iva. I'm the lateral and regional coordinator in ACF Latvia. And uh, our call is a bit different from Katerina's call, as it is restricted call for uh, initiatives which are already existing in Active Citizens Fund. Those are strategic and capacity projects. And the deadline is really, really close. It's the 3rd of April, uh, midnight, almost midnight. And uh, the budget uh, our promoters can get is for capacity pr uh, projects is to uh, up to 5,000 euros and for st strategic projects is 7,000 euros. And therefore, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to be sort of a matchmaker because we have two organizations searching for the partners at the moment in Iceland or in Norway, but they have already pretty good uh, partnership in Norway. So thank you for that. Um, one is strategic project and it's run by the age four club. It's an international organization, one of the biggest organizations in Latvia for youth and, um, and one of oldest organizations. And they involve children to create balanced environment in sustainable development. And their project is called the giveaway to the youth. And they're really, really searching for the similar organization in Iceland right now. And the other one is here and together. It's pretty small organization. They have at the moment capacity building project, and that's an uh, organization for youth with functional disabilities and their families. And uh, they are searching the way how they could better communicate with um, with the society and to uh, raise their funds uh, apart from the project funds. So they'd like to learn from the organization which works in the similar field probably and have uh, more experience on that. And apart from that, our bilateral fund is also, um, we have some money to spend also for a site visit. And that's for FO stuff this time, because um, uh, our ACF is built from uh, six organizations. We are a consortium. 
and all of us, uh, all those six organizations are regional and national level organizations. So we really work with smaller organizations, try to help them to um, develop their skills. And we plan, it's like a training for trainers. Uh, we'd like to go to Iceland and uh, meet some of your organizations to get the knowledge on uh, a fund diversification. Um, and uh, if somebody uh, is interested to get to know more of the Latvian organizations, uh, we would be very happy if you could uh, contact us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. And this is going to be the moment when I'm going to pretend I'm from Malta because Jan, our friend uh, from Malta, uh, could not join us uh, today. It was a last minute thing. So um, you're going to have all the details in the sheet. Just wanted to mention that Malta, who is apparently uh, lacking bilateral initiatives, as Joanna told us some time ago, even though it's such a nice country to cooperate with, um, they have uh, also a small bilateral uh, cooperation initiative uh, rolling call, which is open uh, till quite late, but basically um, till the end of the program, as it happens in Malta. Uh, the initiatives here could be slightly bigger. As you can see, the maximum grant is 15,000 euros. Uh, this is the call where the applicants have to be registered Maltesian um, organization, but they can have and they should have to be able to apply either Icelandic, Norwegian or a Liechtensteinian partner to join them. Um, and this is a similar type of a call as mentioned before. So something done together, exchange of um, know-how or experience or some particular specific initiative done by um, um, an organization from Malta and a partner from one of the countries. Uh, the topics of those initiatives should um, somehow subscribe into the wider um, outcomes of the program. So as you can see, civic engagement, human rights protection, advocacy, empowerment of vulnerable groups. It's quite a broad spectrum to choose from. And the type of activities that uh, Jan suggested um, are also something that were mentioned before. So some short-term exchange of experience, internships, study visit, training course, workshops, job shadowing, probably some other options as well. Um, the main focus or the main goal of that should be this uh, cooperation and exchange. And um, yeah, this is basically uh, quite a simple type of call, but the biggest advantage I would say probably here is also that you can do something bigger as 15,000 euro is actually, it's a, um, yeah, it's more or less three times most of our calls offer. So um, this is probably something that might uh, allow bigger initiatives to take place. So, so much about Malta. Um, we are going to move to Poland now. Um, and here I'm going to continue a little bit taking my other and my proper hat as I, on a daily basis, I work in the Polish program, the, the regional one. My friend Anna Fedas will, will join and tell you a little bit more about examples of how to, um, what can happen within the Polish call. We are two programs, we, uh, which gives us a little more, uh, gives you potentially a little more opportunities uh, to apply. The, the, the allocation is divided for the bilateral initiatives for the two programs, but the ideas are the same for um, both of them. So we are looking for bilateral initiatives um, that are prepared and the applicants could only be Polish CSOs, but they have to have a partner from donor state entities, at least one. Uh, they should apply together uh, for small initiatives that are focused on exchange of competences, experiences, knowledge, know-how. We would especially welcome pro small projects that will have this element of learning mobility, especially internships and job shadowing. Those are not compulsory. We are really looking forward to it. This was this idea that we have when we designed this call. Uh, to give the organizations an opportunity to visit each other, not only for a day or two, but maybe for like a week or even 10 days, like proper working days. Uh, but some other forms are also most welcome. Uh, but this element of education and exchange is the crucial one. Those are not supposed to be just project for external beneficiaries. They should be mostly focused on what's going to happen with the organization, Polish one and the one from other state, what they can learn from each other, what they can take from this initiative for their further um, endeavors. And uh, the deadline here is until the end of April. 
Uh, the initiative should be not very long, but it's like one to six months um, long for, for the all, all thing to, to happen and end. Um, and this is like when, what, when it comes to formalities, but Anna will tell you a little bit more about what can actually happen within those initiatives and what, the, what are the experience we have so far here. Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Eva. I'm Anna Fedas, working for the Active Citizens Fund National in, in Poland. And actually, I just wanted to share with you uh, example, two examples that maybe will encourage you uh, to um, uh, to start to start or like to um, uh, to try to um, use our offer as also a possibility for developing your organizations. Um, this is the, um, the photo from uh, from our Polish Lithuanian um, um, seminar, after which uh, participants just decided to meet once again in Vilnius and compare their favorite methodologies to uh, de uh, deliver a workshop on multicultural dialogue or multicultural um, um, multicultural I would say maybe competences that's that was the aim and each of them um, um, was a trainer and uh, I had their favorite um, scenario for a workshop for uh, teenagers in school about it so they just uh, pretended they are other pupils and they delivered it uh, to each other and that was their time spent together as a trainer so it was their own in, I would say intravision among uh, trainers on bilateral cooperation so it was just uh, as I wrote here the know-how and exchange between expert practitioners because they are all working in this field and for uh, the, um, for many years uh, it was learning by doing so it wasn't just exchanging the documents but also like showing how they do it and they were pretending it like was like a simulation and uh, then it was peer to peer and also the process was the result no not uh, so the exchange was the result not other results like number of pupils who um, uh, who were there or other or number of uh, reports uh, published together so just the process of being together and exchanging know how and also equal exchange, which was really important that there was no, no one who was the better one or more experienced. Each of them had the chance to uh, uh, to be the expert and practitioners and the one who delivers and the one who receives. Then the second idea um, made uh, um, it also follow up uh, initiative after study trip to Iceland on counteracting gender based violence. It was made together with Icelandic police uh, and other Orga uh, Icelandic organizations dealing with uh, counteracting gender-based violence. And after this trip, uh, participants de decided that um, actually uh, they can um, do something together and think because, thanks to this, learn from each other, but also thanks to this exchange, they can fill the gap. And that was, uh, and that's very, I would say, uh, important in this case. So they, um, knowing that there are a lot of Polish Poles in Iceland living, and um, um, Icelandic organization had uh, issues with inviting, uh, so problems with uh, invite reaching the 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 Polish um, um, migrants, uh, especially Poles uh, like females living from Poland living in Iceland, uh, to be the participants of their activities. Um, uh, on empowering for, on women rights, empowering women, but also uh, attack, um, dealing with this uh, this very uh, sensitive subject of domestic violence. Uh, they used the uh, expertise of Polish organizations and they organized this workshop together. Uh, and uh, thanks to this, um, their extender they're offered into uh, um, pol um, polls as as a new target group uh, for the I Icelandic organization. But also they uh, learned together how to work with uh, with this with this group. So they just took the advantage of this situation that there are like polls, and, and I think correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, uh, Poles are the biggest um, minority living in Iceland when it comes to people with migrant background. And thanks to this workshop, they also um, could share the, uh, their know-how, how to deliver this kind of workshop, how to deal. As far as I remember, it was also vendor workshop, so about 
self-defense. So it wasn't only about the, uh, the women's rights and psychological issues, but very specific uh, um, uh, self-defense uh, tools. So that's just the idea how you can use this. Uh, so it was just one workshop, but thanks to this, maybe the cooperation can be broader and the offer of uh, Icelandic organization can also be more enriched. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the last uh, but not least uh, bilateral call that is happening right now is the Portugal, the Portuguese one. So Giuseppe, please tell a little bit more about that. We cannot hear you as far as I'm concerned. No, no, no. Oh, no. Okay, just can you try once again? Sorry. Mm. No, we cannot hear you. Sorry, somebody else said something and I thought that was you, but you are not muted. It's just a question of headphones. It's not working. Can you like try to like, yeah, plug it off? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we can hear oh, you. Yeah. And it was the headphones. Okay, um, uh, I'm José Loterio, I'm uh, from uh, ACF Portugal. We've had a, a, an ongoing call uh, since July 2018, uh, and uh, uh, that call will, will close at the end of June this year. Um, we uh, evaluate applications as they come in. We just ask applicants to submit them with at least 60 days uh, in advance of the, the planned initiative. Um, we've had a total budget allocated for this of 90,000 euros. Um, we've been very successful um, in, in finding partners for projects, very successful, uh, less so for, for initiatives. So we're still looking to, to, to spend most of this budget. And um, we have uh, uh, up to 6,000 euros for, for initiative donor state entities can apply directly as project promoters and they can have up to two um, initiatives uh, approved as project promoters. You just have to have a, a Portuguese NGO as a, a partner. Um, we have defined um, some priorities for, for this call. Uh, they are advocacy and monitoring of public policies, fundraising, volunteer management, and promotion of gender equality and tackling gender-based violence. But we're not limited to, to these. These were just the, the, the areas where we thought um, we had most to gain from each other. Um, the types of activities are very much in line with uh, the others. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's it uh, when it comes to the presentation. We know it's a, quite a bit of uh, facts and figures, but as I said, you will get it uh, in the file. I think the presentation as well, we can share it. It's no problem. Um, but if there is anything at this point that you might want to ask any of us about any specific program or the whole idea behind it, um, anything about looking for partners, maybe this is probably the best uh, time to do it. In the shared file, you'll have the contacts for each of the program and in most cases, even to us personally, because the bunch of us are um, persons responsible for, for bilateral and regional cooperation in each of the program in the given countries. So you can just email us directly. Uh, but if there is anything else at this point, you might want to know. Um, it might be a good occasion. And because we are not a big group, it's probably just the easiest way to unmute yourself and ask directly or write it in a chat if you prefer. It's obviously not compulsory. <laughs> so we, we will be happy just to leave you with uh, food for thoughts if that's the case. Um, as I, as I, I think was saying at some point, the main thing to consider probably, apart from which of the countries you are interested in and uh, seems like a good place to, to find somebody for cooperation is of course the question in which of the calls you as a Norwegian or Icelandic or Liechtensteinian organization can apply directly uh, and which in which you have to have a, a leader from this country. But 
in any of the cases, it's a good option. If you already have some partnership or you think about some organization or institution that you would like to cooperate with to maybe like start off this partnership with uh, such an initiative or develop something that you've already been working on. Um, if you have somebody just, you can, you know, you can take this partnership on the road, or if you're looking for some partner, just, you can contact us. And there is a person with a question. That's always a great thing. Um, Ernel, so you can, if you can just unmute yourself and ask the question or give us a comment, that would be great. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Erna Hult, and uh, I'm working with the Hapna Fjord of Bayer. Uh, uh, the social service. Um, I was interested to take part here, and uh, because mainly we were working with uh, um, refugees and asylum seekers, uh, <clears throat> and we have a lot of, you know, um, um, concern to uh, work with immigrants, especially women, to help to include them more in the society. So that's why I had a question, if it's possible for us also to apply towards some you know, partners in these countries who has the experience of working with you know, refugees and asylum seekers. Um, to be clear, Ernie, you're a, uh, you work for a government organization? Yeah, I'm working with the social service. Yeah. Okay. It's with uh, the city municipality. I, I can't answer for everyone, but um, normally Norwegian or Icelandic public institutions are eligible, but you have to check on a case by case basis. And as Eva mentioned earlier, we will be sharing um, a kind of uh, summarizing document where you'll be able to see for which calls you'll be able to apply as a public institution. I hope that answers your question. Okay, yeah, thank you. So as partners, I think in all cases, you can be a partner. In some, I'm, I'm just looking at the table, but uh, at least I'm thinking uh, in Cyprus, for example, I think you, Yanis, put it like straight away that public organizations from donor state countries, they can be also, um, like, you know. Partners. Yeah. Partners, yeah. Both so, as partners and as main applicants. It can be both. So at least in some of our states, you can even apply as a leader of such an initiative, Cyprus being the case, yeah. for example. Okay. It's the same also for Greece, which is another country with all this uh, refugee, let's say, experience. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is that we've already received applications uh, by public, let's say, uh, entities. So in a way, it has also been tested. But uh, in any case, I mean, the emails that we have shared are some emails where you can send your statute uh, despite the, the, let's say, the legal status, and you can have a quick feedback on us on whether someone is eligible or not, so that you don't get into all the trouble of finding a partner and writing down the application and then being rejected in, in the second yes. stage. So this is one thing that we strongly, strongly recommend if you have any doubts. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And it's, it's uh, for sure also the same as in Portugal, as far as I understand, so that they can apply directly. Yeah. Any other question, comments, something to be addressed? Uh, Greta, yeah, please. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Greta, and I work with the UFF Norway. So we actually have already a partner in uh, Poland. But what we do uh, is like to collect second hand clothes and to sell them. And all the incomes are used for development projects, mainly in Africa or Asia. So the idea of the exchange actually is not uh, um, on uh, like, a, it's like, it's more an exchange of uh, capacity that are very technical, I suppose, because it's not like on uh, related on human rights. This is the final aim of the association, but it's not like what we, we aim to exchange or meet with the partner about basically. So I don't know if it, it is like a good fit or is it out of uh, the scope of these uh, grants. Greta, could you please repeat what, what exactly you do because I didn't catch it. Yeah, basically we, we have containers. So we collect clothes that uh, people or like other uh, partners donate. We sort the clothes and we donate, we sell them in our second hand shops. And uh, of course, we promote the idea that uh, all the incomes are used for uh, development projects. 
in Africa, Asia, and South America. But uh, the idea of the exchange with Poland is more to, yeah, not to speak about the development projects themselves, but to speak about how to increase uh, um, the collection and uh, how to promote it more with the population locally. So the, the population is aware that the, the incomes are used for that and they want to donate the clothes mainly. I mean, at least from the Polish perspective, if you will have a Polish partner who is doing a similar job or is like doing some other, maybe using a different method, but uh, the type of work that they do requires being able to get the idea to the community, like they want, would like to work on their communication, on their, there are some other elements, as you're saying, like technical elements of um, designing or implementing this way of work that would um, involve the community or communication with the community. I think, at least in our cases, there could be some exchange initiatives built upon it, for sure. I mean, as I was saying, within the initiatives that we finance uh, in our program, you do not have to have external beneficiaries. This is an initiative that should be focused on the knowledge exchange or experience exchange. So it can be definitely something you know like a workshop or other type of um initiative but it's which is focused on like learning from the pers your expertise like how to organize a similar mm -hmm. type of work or how to work with the community to promote your activities yeah for sure okay so it could be also more technical like to have a workshop and exchange about how to sort the clothes or uh, how to collect them or is it more about communicating with the public um I mean, there um, because the Polish organization will have to be an applicant, they will have to like show in the application and explain if they want to learn about this most technical way, like okay. uh, sorting the clothes, how would they be able in the future to use it practically? Because um, we are looking for, in the bigger scope, we're looking for this, you know, impact of what can be done later on with this knowledge. So I wouldn't say yes or no at this point, but uh, they would have to like, um, yeah, argue for why this type of very technical knowledge is needed in their case. What could they do with it later on with a more social impact? Great. Thank uh, you and also, much. if I may, just uh, one a recommendation and also um, so what this orga Polish organizations can learn from you, but also what can you learn from them? Maybe there there is some mm -hmm. kind of other skills that you would need and this organization for this Polish partner uh, can help you to gain so so that it would be this, uh, you know, this exchange in uh, uh, per se. So it's also the uh, um, the you know the the levers and receivers of know how uh, are like equally uh, shared between both partnerships. So that's that's another advantage when uh, you can uh, think about what to put into application. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, third call. Any other question comments? Um, at this point. If not, um, I would just say that uh, await an email from me, take a look at the materials, and uh, if you have any questions or if you would like to ask uh, for some support in looking for a partner in any given country, um, let us know. Oh, but there is also some other question or comments. Seeds Iceland is the name of the participant. Please, please do speak. <laughs> Hi, hello. We were just checking the possibility of registering the organization, but there isn't the option of selecting Iceland. But there is the option of selecting Norway, though. Yeah. Uh, I'll speak first for the database and then Yalti for your database. Yeah, because this, this is a known uh, issue and it has to do with the fact that our online database is funded by the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And so they're quite strict about who gets to register. Um, so unfortunately, it's only open for Norwegian organizations, but Yalti, you have a solution for that. Yeah, um, so we we have our own database, which is uh, a lot more rudimentary, sadly, than um, the Norwegian Helsinki Committee has. And basically, registration into that database uh, goes through essentially by sending an email. And then there is a, a spreadsheet that's accessible through our website. Um, so um, I forgot 
I had it on my notes here to mention this in, during one of our slides, but uh, for the sake of brevity, um, I didn't go into it. So please, uh, if you want to register your organizations in Iceland, just send us an email either to me directly uh, at hjalte at humanrights.is. Um, you can see it in the slides or at info at human rights. Um, so, yeah. But we're also working on improving the database situation. Uh, it's uh, We're hopeful. So I just put Hjalti's email in the chat, but it's also, it's on the slides. So you're going to get it um, in case you don't know it down. So yeah, for the Icelandic organization, this is the way to do it for the time being. There's another question in the chat I see from uh, Thomas Knudsen, who asks, is there an interest to have a visit for conducting beach cleanups or educating on ocean plastic pollution? Uh, do any of the fund operators want to answer that? I'm not sure about a visit, but I just very recently got a question from an organization looking for an Icelandic partner. Uh, they are not they are not working with the ocean cleanup, but river cleanup, river bank. So maybe there is some connection there. Uh, so I would be very happy to put them in touch with you if you are um, dealing with this type of uh, topics for sure. Um, you would have to, I mean, there are probably, there are, um, at least in the th thematic calls that we have, there were plenty of organization working on different ecological issues and environmental issues. So there might be, but this, this case in particular, at least in Poland, I just, yeah, I remember that. So I'm going to look, like, I'm just going to write you uh, using the email you got during the reservation. And yeah, I'm going to put you in touch with one organization that I know is interested in that topic for sure. But in theory, of course, the this kind of activity of like exchanging know-how uh, or organizing this kind of visit is eligible. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm looking at my colleagues from that event, catch it. That 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 would be something that could be also part of the initiative. Okay. Um, okay, so as we fought for this meeting to take one hour, I think we are uh, reaching the end. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for the email. Um, thank you for uh, being here with us. Uh, hopefully, some of you maybe will get a little bit inspired to look for a partner and or even apply you, yourselves and uh, make use of this active citizen funds option to, to cooperate with civil society organization in one of our countries. Um, we will put the recording um, someplace in the public for sure uh, on one of the mm -hmm. channels of the programs and then Jean-Christophe Hialti will be able to share them. And as I said, I'm going to send you all who registered the presentation and the spreadsheet when we put all the info of the different calls together. So it will be easier to navigate. And um, yeah, somebody else, uh, is somebody's hand up at this point. Sorry, I'm just not, uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in the end, I just wanted to thank uh, you and Anna very much for all of your hard work in putting this meeting together. Um, and uh, also to uh, wish uh, Thomas, who I spoke to uh, yesterday, uh, a happy birthday. <laughs> so, oh, sure. Yeah, but, we have a, a yeah. Some here, personal so. touch at the end. <laughs> okay. But uh, thank you very much, Elle. Thank you very much. Anna. No problem. And I, I'm just going to, this is the last thing I want to say. I have to say that we are actually quite a nice bunch of people when it comes to helping with the international cooperation. So if you really think about doing something, uh, just give us uh, a call. Well, an email rather than a call probably for the starters, but uh, we will try to help as much as possible. Uh, really looking forward for the organization from our countries to make use of that bilateral options. It's a, it's quite a unique opportunity to do that. So hopefully something good will come out of that. And that being said, unless any of other of my colleagues would like to jump in, <laughs> uh, thank you very much once again. And hopefully we'll be in, uh, in touch one way or another. Have a good afternoon and the rest of the week. Then, and uh, yeah. Let's stay in touch. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.